Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of The Magical Human Show. Um, how are we all doing? We've got a new moon coming up, I think, next Tuesday. Is that right, Claire? And Pluto's in retrograde. Would you like to talk us around what's going on at the moment? Thanks. Throwing me in the deep end, as always. Um, so, <laughs> thanks. Um, so, yes, new moon is a willow moon next Tuesday. So what we can expect from a willow moon is a deeper connection to our emotional selves. Willow is an emotional tree mm -hmm. and willow is known for literally holding the earth in place. So if you see willow trees around, they are very important for stopping flooding. Mm -hmm. And so we think of that in a metaphorical sense, like how the symbiotic relationship they have with earth. So very nourishing combination, really. And willow is often known as the beginning of Wicca, witchcraft. Um, willow is a very magical tree, especially weeping willow. There's a story about a serpent laying two crimson eggs under the boughs of a willow tree that were the sun and the moon, that were the origin of the species. There's lots of magic. I mean, willow is also the tree used for making coffins and sending people off to the debt to the next part of their journey because it's very protective. And we have willow to thank for salic acid, which is what we use when we have headaches, aspirin. And um, willow is known as sali in Ogham. And so if you have a headache and you go and sit under the boughs of a willow tree and put your head on there, you will feel an awful lot better. And it's a tree to go to, especially a weeping one, to express all your emotions. So you've got that happening next Tuesday. That's the beginning of the willow season. You hang on one sec. Pro as always. I just want to check. It's a new moon in um, Taurus. So a new moon around kind of Taurus and me, because we're in Taurus season, is a season of twos. So we're looking at partnerships. We're looking at kind of sensuality, creativity, manifestation. Um, it's very materialistic is Taurus, very sensual and materialistic, but in a nice way. So it loves beautiful things. So there's that kind of energy so that's the earth. And then, you know, the moon is in an earth sign in Willow. So there's kind of grounding to be had. But I would be thinking people need to be thinking about what they want to manifest over the next month in line with how they truly feel in their hearts. So that's what I feel is coming to us. And certainly this month, we can expect things to be a little bit more gentle because the first five months of the yeah. We're in month five, aren't we? Yeah, the first five months of this year have been full on and people need time to consolidate all that they have been through to process it. And then you asked me to speak about Pluto. Pluto's doing something. What's Pluto doing? Dear gorgeous Pluto, who June must be feeling very close to because he is ruler of Scorchio, and that is June, um, has gone retrograde till October the 12th. And so that just means slowing down in reality, but it looks like he's going backwards. He is the god of wealth, um, death, destruction and transformation. So what that means when that slows down is it puts such a weight and pressure that anything that isn't well established will snap and fall away. And so that could be relationship, that can be thing, that can be parts of self, you know, that just no longer serve. So that's the kind of positive in that. And I can certainly say after that, I don't know about you guys, did you have the thunderstorm last night? Oh my goodness, we had the most crazy electrical storm down here to the point where during the day, my head felt like it was going to explode. And then I held a circle and that kind of, it started in the circle, literally you could see it through the closed blinds, like flashes, pulses of light. I wear my blindfolds, I didn't hear it all night, but my son got woken up um, by it because it freaked him. And um, certainly the behavior I've seen from people today, there's been lots of people kind of just coming into places where they're just like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm not going to do this anymore. You know, there's been lots of kind of random revelations, which on one side of things could be really stressful, but on another have been quite kind of relieving because 
I knew they were coming. So it's kind of energy around that. So just be careful with wealth over the next few months. So um what wealth she says. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, you know, things are starting to turn around. So, you know, it, it's like somehow, but isn't Taurus also to do with growing things? Is this what Pam Gregory is often talking about? It's a perfect time for this because it's all about the, the new seeds growing. I mean, I've got manifestation. Loads, yes, manifestation. Loads of things energy. growing. So, yeah, everything's yes. coming up. And that goes with the wood dragon as well. This is the time to create your vision and sow your seeds and nurture them. And I've got, I've got little plantlets all over the house <laughs> sprouting into potential all, things. Exactly. You've already, that's the thing. You've already done your seeds or star is as for seeds. This is, we've just gone through Beltane yesterday. That's for kind of, you know, recognizing the male energy, the yang energy of things coming to life. It's like that prior puss. It's like, whoa, everything's like, onwards and upwards and the energy is very much there to kind of move through life and a lot but a lot of planets are moving into Taurus this month so things are starting to be more gentle than they have been away from that Aries kind of conqueror energy well what with the, the, the storm you said you know because yesterday it was so still here ah so ominously still it was like it was going to be a massive storm but we didn't have one as far as I know I don't I don't think so Everything was bone dry. It hasn't rained for two whole days. Oh, don't say it too loud. Yeah. And and no wind. I mean, we were all like, what? Where's the wind? Yeah. And it's come back today. So, yeah. But <laughs> I think the storm went up, up, up and across. So, my, probably the other way to like Wales side. I don't know which way around I am on your screen. So, it missed mm -hmm. us June. We were kind of above where it happened. Mm -hmm. Our weather app said at noon, we all got weather alerts. It's going to be a storm. It's been sunny all day. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not lovely it. here. Yeah. Far from the odd straight line going across the sky. <laughs> <laughs> those weird straight lines that keep appearing on the sky. You know, those ones. Are we talking about cloud seeding now? Geo Geoengineering, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's rather a lot of that. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, no, I, I left my chart downstairs because it's absolutely fascinating because of Sedna. Again, transformation, right? Sedna is bang smack in the middle of Taurus, I think, with this. I think that's what Pam said. And she's also, she's in my chart in Aries, in the first house. Which no, is not first house, second house, to do with wealth. Huh, yes. Interesting. Values and wealth. My Pluto is somewhere over there. It, it's but it's it's not necessarily affected right now but it's there i mean you can still feel it mm. digging up stuff that needs to be let go of I keep, every day is a revelation you think oh maybe i should let go of that yeah <laughs> yeah don't need that anymore get rid of that attitude yeah well speaking of seedlings have you two been doing curious things with dandelions you'd like to tell us about is it well, both of you? June has. No, I've been avoiding mowing them. And June's been kind of creating potions. Yeah. yeah. Been creating, June. <clears throat> well, they they have been um David Farrell talks about dandelion having this real soul energy. It's it's got such a spirit, and, and I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it's really powerful and really strong. And they've always spoken to me, you know, especially all all the first yellow flowers of of spring they just come out with sunshine Ooh, we have got sunshine you got sunshine down here you know so it's it's really lovely and um but however our council in their infinite wisdom have seen fit to spray everywhere with glyphosate trying to get rid of them but they can't get rid of them because they're such a determined plant yeah so that being said, what I, I meditated on while I was making the flower essence um, and it came through, it was just love and light and peace and then determination, of course. Mm. So it's not just all floaty, airy, fairy, la, 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 hippies. It's, it's like there's some real solid mm. yin and yang balance with it. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, as a plant, you can use it as Claire knows. We probably have spoken about this the leaves, the roots, and the flowers to make um, tinctures, and you can make 
um, vinegar. I made vinegar last year, dandelion tea with the leaves. The root can be ground up and powdered and not entirely sure what that's good for, but um, I, I don't tend to do that. You know, liver. Yeah. Liver. liver cleansing. Yes. Well, see, springtime is liver time in Chinese medicine. So it's liver and gallbladder. It's a good time to cleanse. Cleavers, dandelions, all of those things. But dandelion's name is is the Don de Lion. Yeah. Which is the teeth of the lion because it gives you courage. Because yes. basically, it didn't somebody say it takes like seven years before they appear or somebody said something like that. Maybe I'm thinking about bluebells, but anyway, dandelions are rife. They're telling me they take a long time. It says I've read something saying if a dandelion's chosen to appear in your lawn, then feel grateful that it's decided to choose you because it takes a while for it to kind of establish itself. Um, in my experience, it doesn't take very long at all. My entire no. garden is covered with them, but <laughs> the average dandelion feeds 85 different types of insect. Because yeah. it's no, no, no May, isn't it? You don't mow the lawns in May to give that for the insect. Oh, that's amazing. amazing. So what yeah. is the flower, tink, the flower essence? The for? flower essence is, well, you, you, what you do is you take the, the flower heads and you put them on a bowl of water in the sun. And like Tuesday was the first day we'd had sunshine for like weeks and oh, weeks. And, weeks. and certainly not full sun for three hours, which is what you need. We've had glimpses of sun, but that's all. So I thought, right, Tuesday, it was going to be sunny all day. I just knew it. And it, I didn't do it in the morning, which I could have done, but I didn't. Um, and I put it out in the afternoon for three hours. And then you take an amber Winchester bottle. And I haven't got any of it with me because I just dashed straight in from being at the clinic. Um, you take an, a 30 mil amber Winchester. And with the pipette, you draw off enough water to fill half the bottle. Then you fill the rest of it with alcohol. And traditionally, you would use brandy. But I always use vodka because I give it to children and it doesn't taste of anything and you don't give it neat vodka to the children you you dilute it again hmm. you first you first you, yeah i'm not that weird it puts them to sleep really well though some people might but no 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 it's not it's not one of the things um so yeah you take that that's the mother essence and then you take four drops from there it's half and half half essence and half vodka and then you put four drops of that in another amber winchester and you fill that up completely with vodka because it it's holding it. The alcohol, it's like a tincture. The alcohol holds it from degrading. And that's why you put them in dark brown bottles so that they don't get in the light and the heat. They don't like any of those things again because they were made in the light and the heat. Mm -hmm. And so um, then from that, you take four drops and put it into a dose prescription bottle for, for someone. And then you fill that up with water and I've got, I use rose crystal water and um, and a tiny bit of vodka just to hold it because it only lasts a month at the most those so you know the prescription is on the, what's the prescription to do well it's all those things love peace joy and determination and courage of course courage yes being becoming a lion becoming stepping into your your own inner light i mean that's the thing that will save us in the end if all this chaos is is just keeping our centers holding on to our centers keeping grounded and keeping connected up there it sounds really simple but it's not that easy to do is it really so mm -hmm. you know it's one of those things that we have to keep on working at constantly mm -hmm. so is the flower essence a secret to healing the world or is there a bit more to it than that one of the Am things. Too much? One of the things. <laughs> yeah. Taking our lead from nature, you can't kind of, you know, dis, you know, that's so such an important way to kind of connect um, with what's going on. It's interesting that you just have them in the water for three hours in sunlight. That's really interesting because you see there's no boiling or anything like that or gentle heating or anything you want it like that so that's really interesting and do you pay attention to the moon phase when you're doing this or you just grab the sunshine when you can yeah basically at the in it the, well they, they originated in this country people make them all over the world so, you know there's arctic ones you know they they own their flowers only flower very briefly in the summer and they have 
sunlight, you know, 24 hours a day practically, but I guess you would choose. I mean, I particularly chose Beltane. Yeah. Yeah, I did. And I, because it was sunny and, and I thought, oh yeah, this is perfect. This is, this is the perfect time to do it. And uh, also there's the thing about the waxing moon adding and no, wait a minute. Waxing we waning and waning is it's the waning moon now. So yeah, now that's a thing. That's a thing because I was looking up cutting hair, like you do for a patient, and I was going to advise her on cutting her hair on the waning moon because that's what I had been told before. And you're nodding. However, when I looked up on a couple of sites, they said cut your hair on the full moon. It depends what you want That's... from the haircut, because mm -hmm. if you want to stimulate growth, you'd go on a waxing. And if you want to limit growth, then you go on a waning. Mm -hmm. And removal is waning, not waxing. Mm. And we're not talking about, about waxing as in tearing strips of things off yourself. No, not that kind of waxing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't wax on a waxing moon. <laughs> wait for waning yeah oh well yes yes so for for thickening hair and for strengthening hair cut it on the on the full moon that was that's what thing yeah or or the waxing moon yeah because the plant picking on a full moon is a better idea because there's more active constituents in the plant because a full moon brings everything to the surface because the gravitational pull is so intense which is why everybody goes nuts because everything that's lurking within them gets drawn up to the surface, so it's more seeable. So plants picked on the full moon and got, yeah, their active constituents are much stronger. Yeah. So the next time I do dandelion, I'm going to do it on the full moon and see what happens. Because we've had the first crop, and then there will be more because it keeps coming back. Yeah. It keeps coming back. <clears throat> so yeah. But there aren't very many in my alleyway this year. Whether there were loads last year. Because they nastily beat down and sprayed. Grow something. Speaking of plant, speaking of plant healing, I saw something in the news today, which was kind of magical, that they witnessed an orangutan in Indonesia. He had a wound on his eye, and they witnessed him use it, picking a plant and using it and, and putting it on to heal it. How amazing is that? That's brilliant. It's like the first recording of of ever a, a, an animal using plants as as medicine. I just thought it was an amazing story. Just because we didn't notice didn't mean it happened, didn't happen well, exactly. before. You know, exactly. there's kind of humans have actually observed it, but it's probably been going on forever. Oh my yeah, gosh. Well, they must amazing. have learned it somewhere, but I just thought it was amazing. I really like that story. Yeah, yeah. that's a gorgeous story. That's a nice, good, feel good thing. Mm. But it's like animals know what to eat as well. Most of them, if they haven't been like over pedigreed, then they know what they're doing and they know how to keep themselves well and things. But we don't, we seem to have treat them, we've humanized them to the point where we think they don't have any common sense and we need to tell them what to do. And it's just like, no, we don't. Now you say that, and I saw a thing the other day about that cats shouldn't have milk or cream or anything like that. They like it, but it's really bad for them. Mm -hmm. And I was having that same thought process, like if it's bad for them, why would they eat it? Haven't they not evolved to know I can't eat that because it's not very good for me? And yet my cat's into everything. But is that because we've over pedigreed them, as you say to Claire, do you think? Well, and also the milk that we're giving them, we've over processed that as well. So it's kind of like if it was the original milk from a cow that had never been genetically modified, then, you know, it would probably be absolutely fine. You know, and if it was back in the day, the cat wouldn't have been allowed any bloody milk because, you know, everyone would have recognized what a precious commodity it was. But you know, I think that, yeah, they're used to it's been bred out of them to generally hunt for food i mean they will do still do hunting because they've been domesticized for so many kind of you know thousands of years that they're just like well, well you're eating it i'm having it too <laughs> there is that i think there is that too and i yeah wherever do you see a, a predatory animal hunting for milk <laughs> no well, you see the quirky videos, don't you, where there's a, a cow and it's and there's a dripping a bit of milk and the farm cat sitting underneath drinking it. Yeah, yeah they would do that. Yeah. 
<laughs> but it's not been pasteurized or touched at that point, is it? It's kind of right. so it's going to be gorgeous and it's going to be full of kind of well, <laughs> vaccinations, but also you know, good oh, well. and bad, 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, it would be all good stuff originally, yeah. it would be fine. It's like what when people have developed sensitivities to things, it's not the original thing, it's like hay fever. How can anybody be allergic to nature? It's wrong. But it's not nature that's wrong. It's us that's wrong. We're yes. out of kilter. That's it's all. Because they're only planting male trees because they don't want to plant female plants because they bear fruit and it's free food. So they're making it male plants and that's what everyone's allergic to. <gasps> it's a conspiracy theory. but Oh, I really want that to sounds so it. fascinating. When I hadn't heard that one before, that's a very good one. Because yeah. <laughs> they don't want to have free food. I can that's what I hear. I can believe it. Yeah, I believe I do anything like this now, theory. I tell you. Like, I do sure, like a bad conspiracy not? theory, but the good ones are good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That doesn't surprise me. Ooh. No, it doesn't surprise me either. With the levels of, of manipulation and just there doesn't seem to be any limit, does there? <laughs> <laughs> And to, am I right, by the way, I suddenly looked at, I was looking at wheat growing in the field next to me the other day, and I suddenly realised it's a form of grass. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's uh, how it starts off, wheatgrass. Oh, by the way, wheatgrass, I've been doing wheatgrass mouthwash to dry, it's better than coconut oil. Did I mention this already? No. It Apparently it's better than coconut oil, and I've been doing coconut oil for decades. Yeah. And it's really, really good. I mean, your teeth look a wee bit green for a while, but then you brush them and it's fine. <laughs> you do it just before you brush at night and then it's it's gone. <laughs> and then okay. I'm doing xylitol mouthwash afterwards because that helps remineralize the teeth. Interesting. Xylitol doesn't sound very natural. It's a fruit sugar. It's a sugar oh, made I from it. beech or birch trees. Yes, I've got some. That's why it sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen it on the shelf. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I've been looking at these dentists on, on YouTube. So, you know. Mm. Well, keep us posted on how that goes with the uh, wheatgrass. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. I use, um, I've got some natural stuff I, I keep forgetting to use, actually, that someone made up using, it's like the oil that you pull through your teeth, like you're talking about. I think it's probably coconut based, but it's got thyme oil in it. And it's absolutely mm -hmm. divine. I just love that fresh kind of thyme. That's an interesting wow. angle on it. Make your own toothpaste with time. Oh, time is just divine. I do love it. Mm. Yeah, it's very good. It keeps the bugs away if you companion plant it. Mm. it keeps the bugs, bugs away from your carrots, apparently. I'm going to have to try this because I've got time out there, but I, they have, I have not had much success with carrots yet. They're still sitting in the living room and they're going... Are you going to put us outside? I think we're scared. I'm not. I don't know whether I want to go outside, but I do. I really want to get done. <laughs> do we have to wait until the frost? So I'm always a bit That's cautious right. in May because of the frosts. Well, we I'm in an now? unprotected. I'm very sheltered alleyway, so oh. there's not going to be frost in our alleyway anytime soon. If we if we have frost, it's just on the rooftops. So you know, it doesn't. Um... So you can be brave and plant them out, then, can't you? I <laughs> Can you get them to go long? Because mine yeah, just yes. be deformed phallic symbols, really. <laughs> well, mine are still little strings. I mean, they're like that with, with, with leafy bits. You know, that's all. They're really tiny, mm -hmm. really babies. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I heard this week as well, because I've got ants, literally, my garden, my greenhouse is ant central. I put something down like a gardening glove and before I fin like I'll come back to it a day later and there's like covered in ant eggs and they've taken it over they keep colonizing everything it's really getting on my wick and um I was at a green day yesterday and um someone was saying at that the woman running it was saying yeah ants are a really healthy sign if you've got ants in your garden they're your friend because they help to break up the soil and have you got clay soil, which I do, then you want lots of ants. But it's to the point where if I lie on my grass, I literally get taken over by ants. It's yeah. mad. There's so many of them. But my garden is insect crazy. I have so many. And I'm pleased for that reason, because mm. it means that there's a lot of life there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it's worrying the when there's no insects and there's no birds. Oh, the swifts and the swallows have come back. Oh, okay. I just saw some today flying because we don't see that many birds around here and this is why we're doing the alleyway gardening so 
the insects will come back and then the birds will come back. We've got loads of birds, loads. But I do live next to a field, so you'd expect there to be a lot of, and I feed the birds, like chip top and a bag. Um, do you sing to them as well? Oh, how lovely. I can just imagine. <laughs> I fly and have conversations with them and they fly off. I'm like, for goodness sake, oh. we do this all the time. Who do you think's giving you these fat balls? But they still, <laughs> even the smart ones, like the ray, the rooks and the jays and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, not the jays, the rooks and the jackdaws and stuff like that. I'm like, come on, man. We, we did make food. bird feeders during one of the lockdowns, but then we realised we were just creating a buffet for the cat. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did birds every day. I was like, I don't think we should do that anymore. So we well, stopped doing it, which is well, a I shame. Have cats. We, get bats. we get bats in, at twilight. That's nice. And like, there's an owl that lives in a tree nearby that we can go to. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. Too. Yeah, got we a have for them. The cat. So, you said wheat growing near you. Are they spraying it with glyphosate? Because yeah, this I is did that today. Oh, because this is the thing again about allergies. A lot of people think that they're sensitive or allergic to gluten, but they're probably overly affected by the glyphosate that everything has been sprayed by. This is now the new thinking. Mm -hmm. oh, isn't yeah, this affecting is. everyone's hormones as well? Isn't it messing yeah, up? Yeah. Oh, it messes with your hormones for sure, for sure. Because mm -hmm. I saw a thing today about that menopause used to be a good thing and you would feel better during menopause but because all the stuff they spray on the food messes with your hormones and that's why menopause is hideous these days and it's all mm -hmm. a hormone disruptor. Yeah. Again, there's it's conspiracy theory. No, no, it's fact. Evil. This is fact. And 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 there's also the um, air fresheners and the oh, plastics. Yeah that are leaching into the water table, yeah. all, you know, the plastic windows that go to the landfill and then the, the plastic estrogen, it's estrogen that is the issue. And then they give people HRT. It makes no sense. I just had this conversation with a patient earlier on, but well, I have it every day with multiple people because I'm trying desperately to encourage people to use natural methods, but it's like putting a finger in a dike. It's just so difficult. It's so difficult. Because, you know, it's it's so much easier to just, mm -hmm. but then yeah. what do you do? Because there, there's this really lovely website called Wellsprings mm -hmm. and they do progesterone cream, but they also do a mix, progesterone and estrogen, because they realize now that if people are coming off the HRT, they can't just go bang onto the progesterone. So they need something. I think that's me oversimplifying it. I like things to be simple. But you know, if you take if you take estrogen and you have a womb, you have to have the progesterone because too much estrogen puts you more at risk of something in your womb. Is it womb cancer or something? Breast cancer. cancer. Yeah. 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 No, no, yeah. not no, no, not breast cancer. No, that was debunked. No, it's yeah, that, well, you say that. <laughs> you say that. It did it, it happened. It happened. They can't pretend it didn't. Loads of women on HRT did get breast cancer in the 90s. So, you know. But they were they were on they were on straight estrogen um, mm. HRT. Now they're doing a mix because they got smarter. But it's still not. And then you know you're still replacing your own natural things, so your body isn't going to produce them. So mm. I'm and and then they're giving women testosterone as well. So they might as well just give us the whole range. Here you go. Here's a pill with all your hormones. You don't need to produce any more at all. Here they are. Yeah, That's but good to make sarcasm. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen are using testosterone to recover their libidos yeah i think it does a few things i can't remember what there was i don't take it it's good for muscles yeah mm. i mean it's just yeah as you say june it's like you know we should be able to yes i know we've got all the chemicals and the food and everything else but i do think that the symptoms that people experience in menopause are an indication that the behavior needs to change around eating diet exercise sleep it's like it's a call for a change it's like you can't get away with thinking doing the behavior you've been doing that's what i think i think yeah yeah a... yeah and we yeah. have to embrace it's elderhood easier. embracing elderhood i mean this is the trouble if we can if we can get the respect we deserve as elders you know it's not going to be a thing to go into like oh god i'm i'm going to be old and i'm going to be useless and i mean all that kind of stuff that happens you know? yeah is a reclaim of like power and it's like wow i'm not getting rid of my energy every month by bleeding it out and keeping it in i'm getting richer and richer and richer yeah and then the energy comes up and you get hairs on your chin and then you just <laughs> take somebody 
and get them taken out. It's very, yes, very it's, simple. It's very simple. Yeah. No, and that's okay too. You know, I had my first experience of that a few weeks ago. It was uh, quite something. I don't really have a moustache, but I was told that I did one summer by my husband and I took it to heart and went off and he said, he never said that, but he did. And went off and had a Tash consultation. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Well, redheads, it's got to be some advantage to, you know, all this peely wally skin, which is not getting very hairy. I'm sure, Tomar, you won't get very hairy either. Not particularly, no. Pale skin. Yeah, me too. Mm. No, we're not I, really... I lost all my leg hair when I hit the menopause. Gone. God, I wish oh, I'd left mine. That's something to look forward to. It didn't all just kind of <laughs> fall off. It just like stopped growing. It's it, it... <laughs> Imagine little piles of hair. <laughs> <laughs> that is. It's just one less job, isn't it? That sounds yeah. Fun. That sounds good. Yeah. You know, wow, that, that hasn't happened to me. I want that. Yeah. I can't <laughs> remember, remember what age I was. The symptoms would not be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Like a checklist. I'll have thicker hair. In fact, I'd like thinner hair and less hair. Yeah. 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 Hair in all the right places. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. Some of that. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. One hundred percent. Well, and, and for people like myself, who was really always very cold, being a bit warmer is not bad. And I didn't get yeah. hot flushes. I just I just stopped being so horribly cold. Mm, same. Oh. Just wanting a little bit warmer. That's nice. Mm. I don't know if it's a circulation thing, because I have a acupressure mat that I lay on that's helped with circulation. So I don't know how much of it might be that. Nice. <laughs> yes. Circulation. circulation. Mm. Big issue for me. Mm. that note I, kind of I did like some really actually... nice massages yeah oh is that you're about to finish no no, no, no. you've got say, something more to I add I did some lovely mini massages today at this um pub that we've opened in in a pay you feel cafe and mm. I wasn't sure how it would be received because they're there to have lunch mm. and get free groceries and go home but then we've been lurking in the corner for the last few weeks. And then I started doing mini massages seated in the chair with clothes on and just these Chinese style rolling massage. And mm. honestly, the people, everyone who came, they all left with little rosy cheeks and looking all relaxed and their shoulders uh. went down and there was 15, 10, 15 minutes. It's, it makes a huge difference. So yeah, that's, that's one way of getting your circulation moving. And encouraging them to think about their feet and get the energy yeah where is it you're offering that service it's it's in a local pay as you feel cafe that happens just on thursdays okay so, so in york we, yeah in york yeah yeah so but we do it we do an outreach service where we take several of the practitioners out to places like we're going to the women's center to do mm -hmm. a, a collection of people doing different things seated reiki a um, bit of hypnotherapy a bit of self-care stuff that i'm doing you know all the and the years <laughs> wow. how lovely yeah, yeah. we're closer i'll have to, I'll have to come to york for a massage do you and you can oh uh, well i only do the short ones i can't do a whole hour i can't i absolutely can't do a whole hour it's too much yeah. I do I do the muscle checking and, and I do the massage and the acupuncture and then I do the massages at the end really briefly just to yeah. bring it all together. Oh. Yeah. I'd love to come and, and be in your collective though. I mean that sounds fabulous. And your your beautiful room that you've got, your little cottagey thing. Oh, it looks so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, it seems to be going really well. I mean, no one's used it as a retreat yet but it does seem to getting um regular bookings which is an absolute nightmare because i have to clean it yeah huh. <laughs> can you yes. not get a cleaner in if it's a business self-cleaning self-cleaning place that's what you want <laughs> it is what i want june you're right um no tamar not initially because you've got to recover costs so oh, until it's really regular then you know and you know that that income's coming in there's no point in bringing in a third party plus mm. fact when it comes to cleaning i am brilliant at it i hate it but i'm very good at it so the place looks spotless no fingerprints anywhere it's just like immaculate um mm. so it would be finding someone that could keep up with that level of cleanliness really that would be in really important my issue is washing i've already dyed the bath mat and the white towel 
a shade of pink. Oops. And I'm just like, um, and my husband's like, why can't you ever get anything right with a washing? I'm like, because I've got a fucking degree and I'm a good healer. I'm not a washing person. I'm- you try it, mate. You yes. try it. No, we'll take it to Miss Tiggy. She can do it out of Beatrix Potter, but I am not the person for that kind of stuff. So anyway, but it is, yeah, it's um, good that it's working, June. And I look forward to people coming and staying and being well, because that's the ultimate dream. Yeah. Mm, you can play in it June well I was thinking I was thinking it's very tempting yeah you and Tamar come down to my neck of the wood and then we, I'll come up to York I'll get the train up to York and come and stay up in York we can just you know move the magical human show around the country on tour <laughs> that would be good <laughs> that'd be great I love it. love it then we could go somewhere in the middle <laughs> yeah sacred sites yeah yeah Yeah, for sure oh Oh, sacred sites sorry yeah the thing about the three we were talking about that just gotta throw that in there number rob comer is part of the geometrical uh, metaphysical whatever they are guys with robert edward grant who goes to egypt they go to egypt and they're the ones who found the petroglyphs in the stones that had been there all the time that nobody else had ever seen yet and and now now they're the archaeologists are looking at it Anyway, he, he's been doing all this really interesting stuff. I encourage you to listen to Heather Ensworth interviewing him. The Pam Gregory one, I got completely lost, to be honest. And I just went, what are you talking about? I do not understand this. But you might, Claire. But but Heather's one is, he's, he makes more sense. I don't know why. Maybe I've moved into a different bit of my understanding brain. But he was talking about threes, triangles. Yeah. The fire symbol. How there is a, it's it's a quadrant, quad, yeah, there's a fourth thing, the point right in the middle. Oh, a 3D triangle. It into a four. Yeah. What? Yeah, go listen to the thing. It's, it's well, just you're turning a three pointed triangle into a four. Yeah. But because you made it 3D. He's, so he's saying our old thing. way of thinking about geometry is is kind of we're having to it's like kind of rearrange ourselves and and he's talking about the yin and the yang he's got a symbol for yin and yang that's turned into four out of two and it's just like all sorts of and i'm not making any sense I, this is all really garbled but it's <laughs> fascinating can it's we really share fun. the link to the conversation for people to listen to and then you know i will um, yeah that put it in the in the chat now well, we'll link it to the video, shall we? When link we it share to the video. video. Send me the email with a video. Okay. 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 All okay. right. Amazing. Right. Anything else anyone would like to discuss before we end for the evening? Because we've been excited. Enough <laughs> excitement for one day. <laughs> okay, yeah. everyone. Lovely to speak to you as usual. We will meet again in a couple of weeks around the next full moon. Absolutely. Okay. Got to find that stop recording. <laughs> Where is it? Why can I never find it? it Bottom right hand corner. It says leave. <laughs>